I think no. I think we are in a growth scare that has been induced by two different factors. One, a fear of the Fed hiking cycle and this prospect of World War III, which I, I don't think is coming. Um, and, and the reason I feel sort of strongly that we're not in a bear market is because uh, the NASDAQ basically bounced right when it hit this 20% bear market. That's, that's what people um, use as sort of a, a, an indication that we're in a bear market. S&P never got there, Dow never got there, um, small caps never got there. So I, I think that when you think about growth, you think about the NASDAQ. And so the NASDAQ was hit hardest. I think it, it was just honestly a, a run of the mill correction that felt much, much worse. And the reason that the NASDAQ had so far to fall, and especially some of the larger components that people talk about all the time, the Netflixes, the Googles, the Amazons, and then some of the lesser known growth names, I'm not even gonna mention them because our clients probably don't know, but the, the software as a service names. Um, they had further to fall because they'd run so much further up over the last two years, ever since um, you know the overdone stimulus, I guess, when COVID started, you know, that stuff doubled since March of 2020. So there was just a lot more air that needed to come out of that part of the market. I don't think we had a, I don't think we're in a bear market. I think that the, the more stable, um, profitable companies that make up the Dow and uh, maybe the, the less growthy parts of the S&P did not fall by anywhere close to 20%. So I, I, that's, that's my take. I think it was a growth scare and I think we've, we've already hit bottom. It, it's a great and timely question. Um, it, it is somewhat rare for stocks and bonds to decline at the same time. And, and investors have gotten super comfortable with this idea that when there's volatility in the stock market, of course, they're going to lose in that part of their portfolio, but that should be partially offset by the gains that they should expect in the fixed income or bond portion of their portfolio. This quarter has been unique. Um, and a big part of that is sort of what we answered in the previous question, which is this scare, this growth scare and, and this fear of the Fed hike, which sort of caused interest rates to back up a little bit. and interest rates spiking as much as they did, which is, interest rates are still low. And I just want to hammer that point because people are, are worried already. Um, interest rates are still low, but we've probably put 50 basis points or so on the 10 year. Rising interest rates in that short of a period of time are bad for growth stocks. Uh, that's been documented by us on previous videos. And it's bad for bonds because bonds are a, a fixed income vehicle. And so if rates are higher now than when you bought your bond, then your, the cash flows from your bond are worth less than a bond that an investor would buy today. So we've seen this sort of um, challenging environment for a balanced portfolio the first quarter of 2022. And it, it is confusing for investors. I think the thing to really keep in mind is just some perspective. A quarter is not a very long period of time. So if you're talking to somebody about what you can expect from uh, a portfolio that's made up of stocks and bonds, maybe you would show them a, a particular quarter where this sort of thing could happen, where they both decline by somewhat meaningful amounts. But I don't, I, I would never want an investor to be scared off of an allocation because there's a potential for one bad quarter. Uh, of course, there's a potential for a bad quarter in stocks. And of course, there's a potential for a bad quarter in bonds. Together, it's not gonna happen all the time, but it just happened. And so that makes people a little bit nervous. But over a longer period of time, a year, three years, five years, very unlikely to lose money in both of those asset classes. I, I would not call bonds some sort of a screaming buy or a no-brainer where you're guaranteed to make a bunch of money. I don't think that's the case, but I do think that there's some safety built in at this point for two reasons. One, because rates have just spiked up 
by a, by a fair amount. And two, sentiment. I, I just think that bonds feels like the, the scariest trade out there right now. And, and that may lead into the next question, which is, um, you know, this, this Fed hiking cycle. You'd be crazy to buy bonds when the Fed is raising rates. And maybe, maybe not. You know, I, I think that um, there's still, interest rates are still low. It's not an attractive yield you're going to get from buying even high yield bonds, to be honest. But everything is relative. And if you've, you've got to consider what bonds looked like a year ago and what stocks looked like a year ago and what the risks going forward are. And, and I think that there's a, I think there's a better outlook for bonds over the sort of short to intermediate time frame than there was six months ago for sure. They, bonds always deserve a place in a portfolio. I think I'm just a little bit more comfortable today than I was three or six months ago. No, the yield curve is not currently inverted. The 30-year treasury yields more than the 10-year treasury, and the 10-year treasury yields more than the two-year treasury. Those are the spreads that most people kind of look at to determine if the curve is inverted. So no, technically it's not. And I think that the Fed is paying very, very careful attention to that, mostly because every time, I think maybe with there was one exception, but virtually every time the 10 and two-year curve inverts, it leads a recession. And I, the Fed is more aware of that than anybody else, and uh, they're not looking to make that happen. It tells us that uh, the Fed is more concerned with the messaging than what actually ends up happening. I think they're under a lot of pressure right now because inflation is in the headlines every single day. People are complaining about gas prices and home prices and interest rates. Every, it's everywhere you look is this inflation boogeyman. And the Fed is under pressure to do something about it. And the problem is, we've addressed this, I think, in the very last video, there's only so much they can really do without causing even bigger problems than inflation. A recession is worse than inflation. I think most people would agree. So could they hike, right, hike rates? Uh, meaningfully, you know, over the next couple of Fed meetings? Yeah, they could. And would that crush inflation? Maybe. It would probably crush markets, which would then have trickle-down effects. You know, it would affect employment and the wealth effect and all sorts of things. So um, I think what's, what's happening with these dot plots is they're just sending a message that, hey, guys, we, we, we hear you on the inflation thing. We're paying attention and we are going to try to do something about it. And I think what happened on Wednesday, so today's Friday, two days ago, we had the, the Fed meeting where Powell announced a 25 basis point hike to the Fed funds. And I think during the press conference, he, my opinion, really worked hard to explain that um, they're not looking to, to, to tip us into a recession. Will the S&P 500 be higher or lower at year end? Higher. Will the 10-year treasury be above 2% at year end? <laughs> yes. Yes, above? Yes, above. How many times will the Fed raise rates in 2022? Four. Are we going into a recession this year? No. Will European equities outperform U.S. equities over the next 12 months? Yes. Which equity sectors will lead second half performance in the S&P 500? Tech in general and biotech specifically. Is the energy trade over? The, yes, the easy money's been, been made for sure. Has inflation peaked? Yes. Glasses or no glasses? Glasses. <laughs>